Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So today we're sitting down and we're talking about more eyeshadow palettes. I love videos talking about eyeshadow palettes. I put up a video like this about a month ago or so where I talked about eyeshadow palettes in my collection and if I would repurchase them or not. You guys seem to enjoy watching that video as well as I enjoyed filming it. So I figured we would do another one and talk about more palettes in my collection because Yo girl has a lot of eyeshadow palettes. I've got a lot to talk about. So before we get started, don't forget to upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for you guys. If you like this video while you're watching it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And not only that, if you're excited and you want to hear about some eyeshadow palettes, and if I've repurchased them, if honestly, I would spend my harder money on these palettes again, then let's go ahead and get started. So like I mentioned, I did go ahead and do a video just like this about a month ago or so on my channel. I'll have it linked up in the eye and down below in case you missed it and you want to check it out. But today in this video, Mike is actually home from work. So I went ahead and asked him to pick a number between a one and 10 and he chose seven. So I went through my eyeshadow palette collection and just went like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, picked that one. What did they pick that one? You guys understand, you, you get it. So I have quite a list of palettes to talk about. So I'm gonna try to not be super long-winded about each one of them and just kind of tell you my main bullet points of if I like them or not and would I repurchase them or not. So let's start off with the eyeshadow palette that I decided to wear on my eyes today because I picked the palettes and then I wanted to choose one of them to wear today. And the one I have on is my Anastasia Beverly Hills and Jackie Ina palette. This was a collaboration palette with ABH and Jackie Ina. I wanna say this came out back in, 2018 or 2019 it's actually a couple years old and when I open mine up and I show it to you you guys can probably tell that it's a couple years old it's a pretty well-loved palette in my collection would I repurchase this one million percent yes I love this palette with my entire heart everything about this palette I just think is absolutely stunning the color story the shades how they perform the shimmers it is one of my favorite palettes in my whole entire collection. Like truly, I love it so much. You would have to like pry this out of my hands. Like I said, I did use it today for my eyeshadow look. I did went really, really easy and simple. I just put ginger into the crease. I then put this credit shade on the outer corner and up into the crease. And that beautiful uh, shimmer that you see all over the lid is this uh, shade right here called Zam. And then I went ahead and used this Trust Issues as my inner corner highlight. And I just, every time I use this palette, I think it's beautiful and I love the look that I make and it's rich and just stunning. And yes, I would definitely repurchase this. I will probably, I mean, maybe I'll eventually declutter it if it gets like super, super old, but like the love I have for this palette is intense and the packaging is beautiful. It just, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, I need this in my collection. <laughs> then we have an OG palette that I'm, if I had to guess, I would guess like 90% of us has owned this at one point or another, either we have in the past or we still do. And it is the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette, her first volume one palette that came out years and years and years ago. This baby was it. It was the it girl when it first released. And I remember when I bought it, I was so excited. Like I thought I was the bee's knees that I bought this palette because it just was everywhere. I bought it back in 2018, so it's rather old. I'm not gonna lie, I don't reach for it too much right now, but I used to use it all the time. And I remember loving the looks that I made whenever I did use it. Would I repurchase it in this current moment? Probably not. And I don't mean that like negatively towards Jaclyn Hill or Morphe. I just don't really, not that I like, actively not support Morphe on my channel, but I just don't really use anything from them. And I, I like Jaclyn Hill. I watch her channel for the most part, not all the time, but just this palette is not something that I feel like I need in my collection right now. A bunch of the shades are really, really similar to each other. And this shimmer formulation is not like the poppy, punchy shimmers that I typically like on my eyes. They're more subdue, which back in like 2016 or whatever, 2017 when this released, that was like the type of shimmer to have. But now I like something a little bit more intense. So I'm glad I have this in my collection and I'm like, I probably am not going to declutter it or anything just because it is such an OG palette. But like if I lost this, I wouldn't go out of my way to like repurchase it. Then we have the ColourPop Uh Huh Honey palette. I love this palette. I would definitely repurchase this. I really would. I think it's a really beautiful, stunning monochromatic palette. It does have a glitter here in the middle, which I don't tend to ever use on my eyes. Glitters just kind of scare me slash irritate my eyes, so I don't use them. But all the other shades I really genuinely love. I think they are beautiful. Obviously, you have to really like yellow eyeshadow to be able to enjoy this palette, but I don't want it to like scare you. Like, I feel like this is still available on ColourPop's website. Every now and then, I feel like it pops in and out of stock when it's available and when it's not. 
But if you see this and you want to dabble into yellow eyeshadow or just color in your collection, I do recommend this to you guys because it's not super intense. The brightest yellow that's in this palette is this one right here, but everything else is honestly really subdued on the eye. It's a really soft, gentle, honey, warm sort of yellowy eyeshadow. It's not going to be too like highlighter yellow or anything like that. I think a lot of people would really enjoy this palette and the fact that it is so affordable, it's nice to have affordable eyeshadows that are colorful just in case you don't use them very often if that makes sense but if i lost this or anything like that i would definitely repurchase it i don't use it all the time but when i do use it i love the looks that i make speaking of some colorful eyeshadow that is less affordable than the uh -huh honey palette we have the gimme glow pastel dreams palette so gimme glow is an indie brand this is the only um palette that i actually own from them but honestly i want more their eyeshadow formulation is amazing, but they are pricey. Like this palette was $54, which is a lot of money. I understand that. But the quality on this palette is really, really stunning. You have to like pastel shadows in order to enjoy this palette. Obviously, it's all pastels, but they are so beautiful on the eyes. The mattes blend together so stunningly. They aren't like patchy or chalky. Sometimes pastels can be really chalky and they don't show up on your eyes very well. These do. You have to layer them. I'm not going to say like you're going to get full opacity as soon as you put them on your eyes. You do have to layer them, but they do layer up nicely. And then the shimmers in this palette are just out of this world. Like truly they are so impactful on the eyes and absolutely beautiful like it looks like you put a pastel disco ball on your eye and if that's what you want this will give it to you i am trying to decide i feel like i would repurchase this even though it was really really pricey and i and i don't use it very often i'm gonna be honest just because it is such pastel shadows i'm not really in the mood for these colors super often but when I am, I love having this in my collection to reach into because the quality is so good. I have pretty much every pastel shade I would really want, matte and shimmer form. It's very user-friendly. So yeah, as expensive as this is and as little as I honestly use it, I would definitely repurchase it. I love having this in my makeup collection. The next two palettes are honestly really similar to each other color-wise and just the type of palettes that they are, but they're very different price points. One I would repurchase and one I would not repurchase. The first one is from Jason Wu. This is his Flora 9 Matte Agave Palette. So it's just an all matte palette. It has a gradient from really light to really deep and dark. This I got at Target, I believe, or I got it at Jason Wu's website, but they have Jason Wu at Target. And I want to say this is maybe $12 or $14, which is a really great price point, especially for like a little nine pan palette. You have a ton of different matte shades that you would want, and this would pair really nicely with any like shimmer or single shadow that you would want to use it with. And then on the flip side, we have the Makeup by Mario. This is his Master Mattes palette. Again, another all matte palette that has a gradient from really light to really dark. This one though retails for like $49, which is a huge difference in price, like 12 to 49. But honestly, if I were you, I would go ahead and pick up the Master Mattes one. This would be the one that I would repurchase over the Jason Wu one. I was trying to figure out why that is and what my reasoning would be. Not that the quality on this is so much better than this one, but I just feel like it gives you a lot better range of shadows. The Jason Wu one, I feel like is really lacking deeper shades. You really only have one. And then the Makeup by Mario, I really do feel like it's a really nice even gradient from light to deep. You really truly have absolutely any matte shade that you would ever want and need in this palette. And while this one is really good, and I think if you're balling on a budget and you don't want to spend $49 or you can't spend that much money on the Makeup by Mario one, this is an amazing option for you. I, I'm not saying don't get the Jason Wu one. I'm just saying between the two of them, I like this color story and the quality and the packaging on this one a little bit more that it's worth the extra money for me. So would not repurchase Jason Wu, but would repurchase Makeup by Mario Master Mats. I feel like I'm out of breath. Next up, we have this cutie little quad right here from ColourPop. This is their Sure Thing Pressed Powder Palette. So just a really monochromatic sort of quad. ColourPop has been coming out with a ton of these here recently that are all sorts of different color stories. Some of them have been hit or miss for me, I'm not gonna lie. Some of them I have absolutely loved the quality of them and some of them have gotten patchy and not that great on me. This one is one that I do enjoy. I think the quality is nice. The mattes didn't get too patchy on me and the shimmers are really, really pretty. This one was sent to me in PR, but if I woke up tomorrow and it was just gone out of my collection, I wouldn't go out of my way to repurchase it. I like it, I think it's pretty. I like the, you know, 
looks that I make when I use it. You can really only get like one or two looks out of these little quads, which it's not the end of the world to me because they are so affordable, but I just don't think this adds enough to my collection to warrant repurchasing it if I lost it. I do a eyeshadow palette ranking at the end of the year, which I plan on doing again this year, ranking all the eyeshadow palettes that I tried. And you're gonna see quite a few ColourPop quads in my ranking because I have been lucky enough to be put on their PR list and I've gotten quite a few in PR throughout the year. So I'm glad, like I'm happy, I'm grateful that I'm on their PR list, but I just feel like sometimes these little quads just don't really add enough to my collection to warrant, you know, replacing them if I needed to, you know what I mean? I talked about a bougie Pat McGrath mothership in my last video, and I'm talking about another one in this one, but this one is going to be the Divine Rose 1 palette. I actually really love this palette. I believe I talked about Divine Rose 2 in my last video like this, and I said I wouldn't repurchase it, and I know that's like kind of controversial because motherships are like super super expensive i was lucky enough to be sent this to me in friend mail one of my friends had some motherships that she was not using and she wanted to send them to someone who would get more use out of them i don't use this all the time i hate to say that i hate to admit it i just have a lot of eyeshadow palettes in my collection so i don't use this like i'm not constantly reaching for this but what i do i actually really do love this palette i think it's really beautiful i think these two pops of like orangey warm tone colors are unique and different with like the six that are over here over here are really like cool tone neutrally sort of shades and then you have like these two pops of colors and then these two sh uh, special shades are absolutely stunning i feel like when i use this palette i genuinely like the looks that i make so even though it's really really expensive I would repurchase it. I would. I wouldn't repurchase it full price. I would definitely get it on sale. And that is a recommendation for me to you, regardless of what mothership you might possibly want. Pat McGrath always has sales. Always. Do not pay full price for them. I mean, you can if you want. I'm not trying to tell you, like, do not do something. But it just wouldn't make sense for you to pay full price for a mothership when she always has sales. Are they still insanely expensive on sale? Yeah, they're still like $90, but it's better than like $130. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, I would repurchase this. I really do like this palette. Then we have the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. I love this thing. I love this palette with my whole entire heart. Definitely would repurchase it. I don't know if it's still available anymore. I know it was like super on sale here recently and I don't know if she is discontinuing it. I hope that's not the case because it truly is a beautiful palette. But if it is, I understand because it is an older palette. Something about this, just the color story is beautiful to me. It's inspiring to me. I don't really reach for these blues up here all that often, but pretty much the rest of the palette, I love. These deeper mattes get a little patchy on me, but other than that, I don't really struggle with any of the shades. The shimmers in here are out of this world. Like truly, this palette is so stunning. If you do see it on sale, I really recommend you checking it out. I know it's a little bit more colorful and you might look at this and be like, I would never use those shadows. I'm not gonna waste my money on it. Totally get what you're saying, but it really is more neutral than it may be look upon first glance. And I do get really beautiful, neutrally pinky, orangey, warm, stunning looks out of this palette. Like truly, this is another one that I feel like you would have to pry out of my hands because I love it so much. Alrighty, we've got two palettes left. One I would not repurchase and one that I would. Next up is the Juvia's Place Nubian 3 Coral Palette. I ended up getting this on sale from Juvia's Place's website a couple years ago at this point. And while I like this palette and I think it's really beautiful and the quality is nice, I wouldn't repurchase it. And that is solely because I just don't reach for it very often at all. I wanna say I picked this up like three or four years ago. I don't think that I've used this palette in like two years. I that's so bad to say. Like, are you serious? It's literally just been sitting in my collection for like a year or two, not being used. That's ridiculous, Emily. Like, come on. But I like I like it. I don't want to declutter it. I don't want to get rid of it. Like, I'm going to keep it in my collection. But if I lost it, I wouldn't go out of my way to rebuy it because I just don't reach for it enough. But I do like it and I do recommend it to you guys, which is kind of like hypocritical thing to say. Like, you recommend it to us, but you don't use it. And I recommend it to you guys because it is very versatile. You have like some silvers up here. You have some browns. You have some more like corally colors and then more peachy pink colors. You can get a lot of different looks out of this palette. I need to pull this out and use it again soon because it is beautiful. I just don't use it enough to say I rebuy it. And last but not least, we have a palette that I would 1 million percent repurchase. And it is the Natasha Denona Mini Retro Palette. Oh, I love this palette. It is beautiful. Like truly, truly stunning. Every time I use it, I love my look. These two mattes are beautiful. I love this like gunmetally gray green sort of shadow. And then this is just a perfect transition. This is a really pretty pinky sort of shade. This is a stunning, I, 
again, I don't even know, like gunmetally greeny sort of shimmer. And then you have this one right here that's almost like a little bit more of a topper shade. I know her little five pan palettes have gone up in price recently. I wanna say they went from 25 to $27, maybe 28, I don't remember. That's a little bit of a bummer, but I realize inflation's happening everywhere and everything is going up, but I still think that these are worth it at the new $28 price point. And if you look at this palette and you think that you would use these colors, I recommend you checking it out and picking it up because it is just the prettiest little pinky, gray, grungy sort of palette. Love this, would definitely repurchase. And that was it, you guys. That was some palettes that I would repurchase and some that I would not. I'm hoping you're enjoying this video as much as you did the last one. You guys seem to really like that one. And again, like I said in the intro, I really liked filming this. I love talking about eyeshadow. It's like one of my favorite parts of makeup. I love trying new eyeshadow, talking about it, telling you what I would repurchase, what I wouldn't, what I recommend, what I don't, all of the above. If you tried any of these palettes, let me know down below in the comments. Do you agree with me? Would you rebuy them as well or would you not? I probably should have been saying rebuy every now and then. I feel like I said repurchase one million times in this video. So I'm so sorry if that was annoying. But anyways, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're awesome and I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys.